This is a general overview of what should be included in your introduction chapter of a research thesis. How do you start your introduction chapter? We have mentioned that we write about value importance of the area topic in general. We have mentioned we talk about the value of the topic in the field of study or maybe if we are focused on a, on a, on a particular study setting, we write about it, how this particular topic is important in this particular study setting. But still students get confused as to how to start writing. Where shall we start? We've got an independent variable, we've got a dependent variable, we've got mediating variables or moderating variables. Where do we start? Now, in order to answer this question and in order to simplify this issue, I've, I've formulated a few tips. Now, shall we start from the dependent variable? Shall we start from the independent variable or the mediating or moderating variable? The answer for me is quite simple. Focus on the variable around which you have concentrated the study limitations and gaps. So you start from the variable around which you have situated your gaps. Now, for instance, if you are studying from or if you if your gaps revolve around your independent variable, then you should start from your independent variable by identifying the value and importance of your independent variable. Now, after that you have identified the value and importance of this particular variable or your independent variable, your focus should be how it relates to the dependent variable. Now, once you have done this, further, if there are any mediating variables in your study, the scholars can focus on identifying that the influence is not entirely direct, that independent variable does not directly influences or uh, it, it does not have a total impact on the dependent variable, but actually the impact of IV on DV is through other variables, referred to as mediating variables. So this is how you can start. And once you have mentioned about the mediating variable, that the influence is not direct, the scholar can state that existing research has identified several gaps pertinent to the relationship of the variables. Uh, it should be S. So, there are gaps in existing research pertinent to how these variables are interrelated with each other. And then you start writing about your gaps. I've got an example paper here, uh, revisiting the relationship between corporate social responsibility and organizational performance, the mediating role of team outcomes. The full reference will be shared in the description. Now let's have a look at this paper. So how do you do this? Now, here is an example, here is the paper, revisiting the relationship between corporate social responsibility and organizational performance, the mediating role of team outcomes. Now, since the journal is corporate social responsibility and environmental management, it only fits uh, the reason that we started with corporate social responsibility. Now, we started with the value of corporate social responsibility as to how it's important. And following this, we moved on to the empirical research revealed that or the empirical research revealed inconclusive findings regarding the impact of CSR practices on organizational performance. Now, how does there are or how there are inconclusive findings? This is supported by literature. Now, our mediating variable. They argued or these authors or scholars have argued that the direct relationship between CSR and organizational performance cannot assure 100% reliability. And this means that there should be mediating mechanism involved. And through this, and then we further propose, as, okay, these are our mediators and why studying these mediators is important. What are the gaps prevalent to these mediators? Then you start writing about your gaps. So if you are focused on, or if you start writing with your IV, this is how you can do it. Following this, if you are starting if you're starting with your DV, so after identifying its value and importance, you can start focus on how it, uh, it is affected by the IV. Uh, sorry for the typing mistake. Further, if there are mediating variables, so when you're starting with your dependent variable, and once you have identified its value, the next step is how it is affected by the independent variable. And then the same story again. If there are mediating variables, the scholar can focus on identifying the influence 
uh, that the influence is not entirely direct and that there are mediating variables. And following this, the scholar can state that there are several gaps pertinent to the relationship between the variables. Now here is an example paper. Servant Leadership and Employee Innovative Behavior Exploring Psychological Pathways. Now, If you look at this paper, here, the authors actually start with the dependent variable. And once they have mentioned the importance of innovation, and if you are writing a thesis, obviously that has to be in much detail. And then, therefore, it is important to understand the antecedents and mechanism influencing employee innovative behavior. Now, in a single line, the authors have mentioned that there is a need to study how different factors influence this variable and that how different variables can explain the mechanism of impact. And following this, there is a detailed discussion on the gaps pertinent or prevalent, sorry, in existing research. So this is how you can start when you are focusing on the dependent variable. Now, what if you are focusing on, let's say, if you start around the study setting, you're not starting from the independent variable, you're not starting from the dependent variable. But what if you are starting around the study setting? So gaps may be concentrated around the study setting. They might not be concentrated around knowledge management or sorry, the independent variable or the dependent variable, maybe organizational performance. The gaps may be concentrated around the study setting. For instance, higher education, the scholar may start with how the topic is important for a particular study setting. Now you relate that particular topic, that particular concept, that particular construct to the study setting. And then you identify how there is very limited research on this particular topic in a particular study setting. Now the example paper that I've taken is knowledge management processes, knowledge worker satisfaction and organizational performance, symmetric and asymmetrical analysis. Now here is the example paper. I'll share all the references in the description. Now here is the paper and the start is with higher education institutions required. Now the focus is on study setting and then how these concepts are related to that particular study setting. And then followed by this, what gaps are prevalent and assessment of existing literature associated with KM has helped to recognize significant gaps that needs to be filled in the field of higher education institutions. So this is how you can start writing your introduction.